Bonjour, bonjour. Hello. Hi, Chrissy and Peg and Heather, Jean. So good to see you guys. Can you guys hear me? I, for some reason, there was a little, it just kept spinning right as I tried to go live and I panicked. Can you guys hear me? I'll make sure everybody, somebody could let me know. They could see and hear. Because it was acting a little strange when I tried to go live. Great. Thanks, guys. Okay. But look, I just got here. I raced here. I was on a tour. I gave a tour all day. I was outside the pit city at Chateau, and I was doing a special impressionist tour. And literally got here three minutes ago. It was a little touch and go. <laughs> but here we are. And look at that. This is, I got out of the taxi and came right here. And I was like, this is actually a perfect spot because there's not a lot of people here. And you get an amazing view and you get an even better view of the spire from here because we're a little farther away from the base of the church. So look, I will zoom in. Look at that. And look at, let's see. Look at that. Have you ever seen anything as gorgeous as that? And did you think that five years ago, 24 hours from now, 25 hours from now, you would have thought you would have seen this five years later? No, no, there's no way we would have thought we'd be right here. Five years tomorrow. And look at how, look at her. Ah, so great. So I, uh, we're going to do a little walk around here. I've got a bunch of fun stuff to share with you that's updates, where we are, what's coming, all sorts of fun stuff about our beautiful cathedral. And there she is. She is pretty great. Today is great. Yesterday was 80 degrees, 79 degrees, so warm sunny. It's pretty toasty. Today was supposed to just be kind of overcast and not as warm and it's perfect. It's literally the perfect temperature right now. And let's head up over here around. There's a lot of people that was a great little corner to start at because there's not a lot of people there, but we will um, actually let's go down here a bit. Because there's a really great spot over here. You can usually tuck into as I get run over by a bike for the third time. But today, this week, they just added no. the statue up here of Samata, who was one of the uh, early bishops. He was a bishop that was kind of the bishop of saint jean -Vier. Let's see. I'm trying to find a spot away from all the people. Here we go. Look at this. So there we are in the spire. And when we did this, I looked when we did this last. We did it February 25th. So a month and a half ago. And a lot has changed. Back then we still had scaffolding around the base of the spire going up there. And now we have the whole spire. Oh, oh my gosh. You're so sweet. Want to say hi? <laughs> you're listening to me at the same time? Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, you're so sweet. I just got, I raced here. I just raced to get here. You're so good. Okay, thank you. How sweet. <laughs> that was Terry. <laughs> um, so I, uh, yeah, so we just got here. And you can see all the scaffolding, but just, you can see a few remind, remainders of the pink cherry blossom over here. But the very back of it, and now it's all covered with scaffolding, but um, the very back of it. So this part back here, maybe we should go down below. Um, the choir is what they finished on January 12th. And so when we did this in February, um, they had 
the they had just put the big bouquet of flowers. It was mimosas. And if you look up here now, you can see that kind of right. See that little clump, clumpy thing? That is the top of the, of the choir. So when they did that, um, it's a symbolic thing they do. Here, when they finish projects and when they did the other part of the roof, they added it there. And then the same thing with the top of the spire. Um, they added some mimosas up there, just depending on the time of the year. So let's go down here, which is this little opening. Give you, you could see, you know, shop at the Bucanis as we go. But I was out today, I was out at Chateau, did a precious tour around this morning of Paris for my wonderful client, Angelette. And then we did, went out to Chateau, which is the Impressionist Island. And we go and have lunch at the exact restaurant that Renoir painted, the Boating Party, which is at the Phillips Collection in Paris. It's not here in Paris at the Impressionist exhibit at the Orsay because it is, um, it was painted before, but here we are. Okay, let it hold up here. So, look at that. <gasps> I mean, the thing is, is that five years ago, that whole thing was just burning on the top. And now, like, the roof is back. So, you see the spire, and you see Samata right there. I'll try to get in here. Samata. He was just added this week. You also have, uh, there's a statue of Christ, and there's also my guy, Santini. Then the spire, so the spire, there was, when they had it up here, when it was covered in scaffolding, it was 600 tons of scaffolding, 48 layers. So basically 48 floors to go, to get up there, because the floors are, as you can see, see here on the side, they're much smaller than like a normal floor in a house. Um, but could you imagine if they were like, we need you to go up there? I mean, I might have done it to get that close to the spire, but I would have been like, get, I'm going to need a day <laughs> to get up there. Um, but it was 600 tons. And so the spire, what's amazing about the spire is it's four different levels. What you're looking at up at the top is the needle. And then you come down where you have the lower level, which is there's eight windows going around. That is called the open framework. Below that is, is called the strain. And then there's the stool. And the stool, what it is, is the stool goes far into the frame, like very deep into the frame. And you, they needed a thousand trees just to build that. There is, um, some of them are incredibly long because you see how tall the spire is and as it gets to the top and it gets skinnier. Those, that's just, those are just single boards, single beams they build it deep, deep in. And so they could not start the roof until they did um, put the footing of the spire in because with the footing of the spire, it goes so deep into the roof that it actually makes it completely wind resistant. I mean, it would have to take a tornado or hurricane to take that baby down eventually because it's in there and it's, um, there's just, it's a lot. And they built all of this off site. Um, when one of the things was, was when they had to get the wood that I just recently learned, and when they were getting all the wood for this, which actually started the day after the fire, because there was hundreds and hundreds of people as they, they put calls in to the French government and said, you know, we have this, we have trees on our property that you might be able to use their oak because it was called the forest, as you know, because it was literally was an entire forest of trees. So they need 1200 trees for the roof and another thousand trees for the spire. And they had to be oak. Um, they had to be a very certain um, circumference and a certain length. And then they had to be, um, they had, they could not find trees that had already fell over and dry. They had to be green. So you had to get them because, and then they had to find 45 volunteer, volunteer sawmills across France, um, basically gave their space, their time, everything to do this because they had to, um, very close to the time that they um, chop down that tree. They have to get it over there quickly to get cut um, because they would do the first cut in the sawmill. And then after that, they have to do it by axe. 
because they had to do everything um, cl as close as they could to the original way to do it. And then I learned something recently that's really cool about it. I'll tell you in a second. But they have it because it's easier for them to chop the wood that's green and young and still very soft. Um, so on top of getting volunteer sawmills, they also had four different foundries. A foundry, if you don't know, is, you know, when you see uh, sculptures and they're done in bronze and it could say done, you know, it's by Auguste Rodin. And then it'll say that it's um, at the foundry something, something. And so the foundry is what actually does all that with the, um, the bronze, the iron. So there's four different foundries around France that created 50 different specific acts axes that they were going to use, that the workers are going to use to chop and shape the, the boards. And they did it and they did a special little emblem. And I saw one of them and I'll find my picture and try to remember to post that in my Instagram stories tomorrow. Cause it'll be, I'll do a lot for the anniversary. Um, but it has a little stamp on the ax of Notre Dame with the building. And, um, and then what else that they did that is so cool is they did all this research on the original axes that were used at that time in the 12th century, 11th century. And they did it the same exact way. So if somebody, if something happens a thousand years from now and they replace the roof or they look at the boards, they will think that those boards actually and those beams came from the Middle Ages because the marks on it from these axes will be the same as they were in the Middle Ages. I mean, isn't that just about the most amazing thing you've ever heard? So cool. Um, I love that. So they did all of that offsite. They even tested it out. They built it offsite and then they brought it um, in, into Paris and dropped it in place as it went up. Like the top piece was pretty much one whole piece of the spire part, but the open pieces down below came in more um, individual pieces that then they put in. And then you actually, for this and for the roof itself, a lot of it is the wood dowels. And so they're placing them in. They're not, a lot of times they're using metal, uh, metal huge bolts, but they're using also big wood dowels, which they would have used back then. And then they're also putting all of the, when they did the work on it, um, I've shared before the iron staples and VLA the Duke used these iron staples that he put on there. And you would see those at like the Colosseum in Rome and other places, but he used them in a way nobody else had used them. And when he did it, he basically did it on top of it and used it as a staple. So here's this wall in front of me. This basically, it's like there would be two stones right here and it'd be a huge iron staple that would be, you know, a foot long and they'd put in there and they would put in there to lock the stones together. And because by doing that, they know that they found because of that, it kept that all standing because a lot of that was done by the United States. So we're talking 18th century. So it's not quite as long ago. I mean, can, for me, if something is done in um, the 1800s in France, to me, that's new. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's, that's brand new. But because of the way he did it, they found that it actually kept the wall up and standing which is so amazing so they did work on those they do have those at the architectural museum they do have a, a reference of those that you can see and they also have some iron pieces used to attach things from the 12th century i mean how amazing is that so where they could they were able to clean those and add layers to it and solder them and reuse those same ones that VLA the Duke did. Um, and so that is really amazing. The top of it on the spire itself, so there's roofers and there's ornamental roofers. And so the men that did the spire, the, the lead of the spire, are ornamental roofers. And they basically, just like the name is, that is all they do. So you have the roofers that are doing the other pieces, which I'll talk about but the ornamental roofers. And when you look up there, there is 192 hooks. So those things that are sticking out that are kind of almost flowers, there's 192 of those. I'll go down. And do you want to see the rooster another time? <laughs> there she is. So you have the 192 hooks on here. Plus then there is 32 gargoyles. There are eight griffins and eight eagle dukes. So they're eight, uh, the Grand Dukes, and they're um, eagle owls. So they're kind of bigger 
looking guys. There's some my town again. You can see. Um, they still need to wrap all of that, um, the rest, the open work there with lead. But these guys will work with only um, lead, zinc, and copper. And with lead, and so this was a big thing at the time when it came to rebuilding the cathedral because uh, it was decided and voted on that it had to be done in the original format in the original way that VLA the Duke had it, thankfully. So we didn't get any of those wacky ideas of putting some twisted glass spire thing on the top or a swimming pool was one of the ideas. Hey, Susan. Um, and so luckily they were doing it the way that they had it. Um, and so lead, actually they had, there had already been a vote a while ago that they no longer use lead in construction. They could not use lead in stained glass, which is a big problem. Um, but they were lead and I mean you people get sick lead poisoning and our friend Vincenzo Perugia that stole the Mona Lisa he once got sick uh, lead poisoning and so did my guy Delacroix um, but they said no more lead but then they had to because it's Notre Dame and it has to be done the same way it has to be lead so they're being very careful how they do it and how they tr um, transport it but basically when it's in sheets like this it's fine it's when it was melting and burning um that they had to be careful with it but with lead lead is very soft and very malleable so it's easy to make those those very detailed um pieces and those hooks were actually done and those are actually molded in lead but the bigger pieces um that we can't really we kind of can't see can we see them can we see the can you guys see the any of the gargoyles or anything on there? I know, I don't know if I could get in there to see it with this. But when they do those, they're making those out of wood or um, polystyrene, and then they cover it um, up there. So it also makes them lighter. But it might, lead is soft and malleable, but it is also um, very heavy. And um, it also scratches very easily. And if you make a mistake on it, you just have to start over. So if they're sculpting things out of lead, you have to be really careful because you really only get one chance. Now for the roof, to do the roof. Um, oh, hi, Terry. Now she's in the hotel room. It's nice to see you. Thank you again. Thank you for that little treat too. Um, and so to the roof, it's 1,200, uh, 1200 trees. Uh, to go into that. And the, a third of France is covered by forest. Half of it is public and half of it is pri private. What the, of the trees that were donated, 100% were donated. So the country didn't pay for any of the, and it, then there were sawmills that were donating their time, as I said. Um, there were some timber companies that were cutting them down, donating their time. Uh, because, I mean, how amazing is that? You're going to be telling your grandkids and your great-grandkids that you had something to do with Notre Dame. And that is just amazing. Um, and so they came in quickly right after the fire. Um, but now they're at the point where underneath, that's all done. And that's why when they put up that little bouquet of mimosa, that now they're at the part where they're going to, they are already laying those sheets of lead. And down here above the sacristy, the little part, the little part of the building here that was fine. Um, that is what it's going to look like again. So those are the sheets. And so they put that between the roof, then they put wood on top of that. And then they put what's called English paper and the English paper goes in between um, the, the wood and then the sheets of lead. And because that helps make it uh, waterproof. And then they attach each of those. So you can see, you can see the different colors. So those are about how big the pieces are. So it's not just one massive piece that's covering each of those sections. It's little pieces. And there's leather. They also use leather. So there's a leather tab at the top. So that is what they actually like nail down onto the board and over the English paper. And then they overlay everything. And then it's folds. So those are little folds and creases. And that just helps keep with, they make it so it's completely and totally 100% waterproof. So it's really an art to what these guys are doing. And when I came over here yesterday morning, um, because I wanted to get a, a little glimpse of what had changed this week, and you could hear them working away, and you could hear them saw, you could hear them pounding and stuff, and it just was like so amazing get to hear them just working because it was super quiet in the morning. Nobody was out. There wasn't a lot of cars, and so you could really hear them banging around and working on it, which was 
amazing. So when they brought all these things into Paris, they did a lot of this out um, it, towards Normandy. So they used the Seine to bring everything up here, just like they did with the Eiffel Tower, and I'm sure with the original construction here. So they used the Seine, and there's many times that I would post the pictures of the big barges that were but twice as wide as that over there. And they'd bring the just the big pieces, the big kind of triangular pieces that were the rafters. And so they had to figure out a way to bring those in because they're so big, they'd have to lay down. And so it was a lot of work because when they brought that massive barge in that was longer than this one across the way, they could only bring three of them in at a time. And they took a while to get here. I mean, it's not like a cruise ship cruising down the Seine at, you know, as fast as it could go. And then they also had to, it could only be, it, could, it couldn't, it could only be so high, it could hang over the edge only so far because if they had to turn it around, they had to think of all these. So there's test runs, bring them into Paris to get them all here um, to do it all. So it's kind of, I mean, the amount of things that they have to think about to do this is pretty stunning. And then they have that little uh, platform up there on either side, which is where they would pull them up from the, one of these cranes. There's actually the, the third crane's gone. There was another crane in here and now it's gone. Um, and they'd bring them up there and then they'd get everything kind of, they'd put everything in place because then there'd be other ones attached to it. And then they would just fly into the air and drop them in like magic. But do you guys want to, uh, do you guys, you want to go see the front? I was going to say we go around the back, but there's, it's kind of hard to see much on the back. So let's go head up towards the front. And I'll tell you some of the stuff on the inside that's happening right now. I haven't checked, but I'm sure there's going to be something on French TV tomorrow night um, for the anniversary. There's been things on the news here. It's every other day in the morning. They're giving updates. It's, it's so much is changing right now. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty. Bonjour, madame, monsieur. <laughs> I just basically said what he said to me. He's a monsieur. Um. But look at the cherry blossoms over there. Can I, next year we could be over here. Well, we might not be able to be walking underneath them because after, this year, after everything is done, next year they will start um, a huge project around it, which I've talked about before. And they're going to plant a thousand trees. And then they're going to do, I think a couple weeks ago, and we talked about um, the island, I think. Um, they had, oh, look at that. So this is the boating party there. See that? Wait, why is it getting all? Oh, no, you can't really see it. The boating party, that is, so basically that image right there that Ro Renoir did, that's the boating party. I was having lunch in that same exact place on that same exact corner where he painted that today, where that scene takes place. And if you want to do that when you come to Paris, let me know. Take you out to the island. Tell you all about the Impressionists. There's even a um, a volunteer run where they restore boats. So the boats where the artists would rent. And Renoir and Monet would go hang out there. Go out in the middle of the water and paint. So now, yeah, you can't really see... I was trying to see if they, you could see any of the lead on the roof, but there's so much scaffolding up there, you really can't see anything. Oh, it's just the perfect temperature right now. Absolutely perfect. So this is the thing about the Bukini. And I will tell you, I will guarantee you 100% that none of these guys will be open on the opening ceremony. <laughs> or the days before it, or the days after. I guarantee it.
but it is just imagine this moment with the opening ceremonies. The opening ceremonies doesn't opening ceremonies when they're on the scent. They're gonna go across the other side. They're gonna be on the north side of the island. They won't be coming down this side. The other side's a little wider. So here we are. Look at this. So on the inside, there's a lot. Oh, we could go sit down. Um, on the inside, there is a lot of um, updates on the inside because it's almost done. You have. You can see those amazing braces under the flying buttresses. All of this, all of the stuff, um, before I tell you about the inside. So the outside, what is going on now um, as far as what is going to be done by the Olympics? Um, all of that scaffolding on the roof and um, up around the spire is going to be down by then. Um, that won't, uh, that will be finished. They'll take all of that stuff down. Um, the Spire will be completely finished. It'll have all of the lead work on that done. Um, and so you'll have a lot of this, a lot of the scaffolding done from the, from around it so that we will be able to see um, all of that. Right now, what they um, are also working on is the North Bell Tower. So the North Bell Tower, this is the South. This is a side that has Emmanuel and Marie, and Emmanuel rang out on Easter, and I posted that on my Instagram. If you didn't see it, it's saved in there in the in the feed. You can see, and it rang for five minutes, and it was amazing. Last year it was Emmanuel and Marie. I also have that on there. Just you have to go back a long ways to find it. But the North Tower is where the fire started to come in, and so the fire did come in a little bit. And so two of the eight bell, all the eight bells have been removed. Um, about four months ago and the two of the bells actually need to be redone so they just need to um, repair them and retune them and then the other six just need to be cleaned and then those will go back up those are they're working on that now and the organ installation is starting so the 800 8,000 sorry 8,000 pipes in the organ some of them are as big as you know we could slide our whole body in there and some of them are as small as a pencil those are that's starting to go back in because everything inside is basically spotless. So every one of the chapels is cleaned. Um, all of the sculptures are clean, the monuments, the mausoleum, the uh, walls of each of the chapels with the original painting of Ville Le Duc, that's all been restored and cleaned. Um, the paintings and everything, all of that stuff has been removed. And uh, so the inside is like amazing and I've seen so many pictures and videos and I've tried to share those and I'll see what else um, comes up by tomorrow to share and it is like sparkling and white and just absolutely gorgeous. Um, the um, choir, the choir wall that's in there that kind of goes around the back of the choir that's the carved wood that's just phenomenal um, that was damaged a bit in the because of all the water that's all that just was finished that's all been restored and then the north and south gables with those statues have all been we can't see anything on the north side because it's still completely covered but here you could kind of see you could see saint Martin up there again um we can't see the one of saint denis because he's kind of buried in there but look at that it's pretty amazing and then they have quite a few things that they still need to do um, the new the new furniture has to be all created, um, and that's also being I mean that's being created now. But they will need to add all of that in. Um, Guillaume Baudet is the name of the man that's doing all of the um, like the altar, and some of that's being done in bronze. The altar and um, the tabernacle and the baptistry, and then there is a woman. Iona Voltran, she is the one that is doing the chairs. The chairs are going to be very different. The chairs are going to have like a very, very low back. Um, there was originally talk of them being benches with wheels that could be locked in so they could take them out and move it. People were pretty upset because it is still a cathedral. It is still a working church, technically, a basilica, as we know from last week. And... Uh, if they don't do, you know, you can't have your wedding in there, but they still do mass every single day, a few times a day. And so it's not, it smells like, it smells like uh, orange blossom. 
but it still needs to, it's still a church. It's still, it, it should not be just treated as a museum. It's still a working church. So look at this. And Charlemagne. So with everything, so the stained glass window, the only stained glass window that was removed were the ones along the very top of the back side of the church, that whole top level. None of those were damaged. So everything was, um, they took them out to clean them and to check them, make sure there weren't any cracks. And that was all done. And they repaired those, they repaired those and put those in about a year and a half ago. None of the rose windows were damaged, which is amazing. The front window here is the smallest and it's also the oldest and it goes back to 1220. And this was the oldest one. It was um, under VLA the Duke. He did take it apart, redid the stone part of it, and shifted it. So if you're when we're looking at that right now, just basically for those of us that are old enough to remember a rotary phone, <laughs> stick your fingers in there and do it like you're gonna go and you're dialing like a three. <laughs> and so you just turn it to the right a little bit, about a couple, just a tiny like a probably like i don't know 15 percent, and that's what he did because a rose window not only is it beautiful but it also serves as a function because it helps distribute weight because you have all of those different arms coming down it actually distributes the weight of um the facade of the church so the one in the front as i said it's the oldest it's also the smallest um and it has the virgin and child in the center of it and then it goes around the zodiac and then it has the 12 tribes of israel then on the outside it has the vices and the virtues but told in a story with animals which is amazing i do love that they have the zodiac in the church they also in the front of it and I can't wait till we can see the doors again. Uh, but a, in the front around the main door, the judgment, um, you have the symbols of the Zodiac. And a lot of people sometimes say that's Mama Jomo, but it goes back a very long time. And it has been attached to the church. There's the Kings of Judah there. Um, but the north window, the north rose window, those both are larger. Those are also, um, those were done in 1250. And the one on the south here, um, it was the one that has basically been uh, they completely taken apart, put back together, and about 40% of it is 18th century so, or 19th century. So the Ville Le Duc, because that one was actually in pretty bad shape. And so the north and the west one are completely original, and then a little more than half of the south is. And the south window was a gift from Saint Louis, Louis the Ninth, Saint Louis. It was a gift from him to the church um and so i can't wait to get to see those i remember when the fire happened i think that was a big concern of everybody was like how are the rose windows um but luckily all of those were just fine so yay um when it reopens there's going to be some things that are going to be different like it's going to change how you go into the church so um you used to go in here to the right to the right door which is the door of Satan. Um, the mother of Mary, but also the patron saint of grandmothers. And so I love her. Um, but we used to go through that door. They're now going to change it. So we're going to walk in the center door, the larger door that is the last judgment. And with that door, um, they're also going to change the route. You used to go right in this door here, the south door, and then go in and kind of circle around. You're now going to go in and you're going to go to the north side. Um, you're going to walk down the north side and um which is going to be the called the alley of promise and the chapels on that side are dedicated to um, witnesses of the old testament i don't know if that means they are going to i didn't have enough time to pull out my other book that i've done all that i had basically retranscribed all of the info from inside the church on the plaques of what the chapels are uh, but they're not they didn't change the painting and the walls. So I don't think they're actually going to change the chapels of who they're dedicated to because they would have had to repaint it and they didn't. They restored it. They didn't repaint it. Um, but they are going to do that. So when you walk in the church, you're going to go to the left and go on the north side and down and around and come back out the south side. Um, so that is a bit of a change. Um, they are also adding in six contemporary windows, which some people are pretty upset about. And there's a petition going around 
to sign that to stop that. And those will go in to the first three chapels here on the south side. Um, that won't happen until long after it is opened. It's supposed to be 2026 is going to go in. Um, and they are just now put a call out for artists to submit their renditions of what they think it should be. And they wanted to incorporate some windows into the church, reflecting the last five years, what the church has come through, everything, which I do like that side. I just don't like that they're taking the other ones out. But they are going to do a museum. And they're going to put the Hotel Dieu. And I've shared that before with, um, because they, that was talks of doing that long before the fire. So hopefully they already have that plan in place and they could do, um, hopefully that won't take too long and something pretty amazing things are going to go in there. Um, but those windows that they will take out of the church, um, from those chapels, three chapels on the South, they'll put in there. So you can still see them, but I'm still not down with it. Keep it the way it is. Don't change it. But, you know, you have the um, Notre Dame de Reims and in Champagne that has the Chagall windows. And I love the Chagall windows. And at that one point, those are contemporary, too. But we'll see. They're this, these guys are in Chagall that are going to make it. So I don't know. I probably won't like it. <laughs> but it is pretty amazing. But they are going to put in the Hotel Dieu, the museum, this area below us where we're standing um, down below the Seine. They're going to have this as like a big visitor's entrance. So you could go in there. They'll probably have meetups for group tours. They'll have bathrooms, everything. That nothing will start until after probably most likely end of 2025, beginning of 2026 to do all that. Um, but the hotel to, to do the museum in there, I actually can't wait. Um, but there's going to be a lot of stuff happening this year in a couple weeks. And I cannot wait to see this because it's actually going to open just a day before my birthday, they are going to have the carpet that I just did on the, talked about on the podcast last week and did in my newsletter this last week, the carpet of Notre Dame that was in there, um, that was created. And then it was also used for the baptism of Prince Louis, um, Napoleon, the son of Napoleon the third. Um, they use that for that. They also use it for the coronation of Charles the 10th. Um, and, that is going to be on display again and it's been fully restored so the last time i saw it which was 2021 september it was um it had just basically they had just at that point it had been in a freezer for six months to kill any bugs or anything and then they pulled it out and they were starting to restore it so now it's been restored but they're also gonna have some of the paintings from inside the church and if you had been in there and really looked at the paintings that were in the chapels, they were so dirty and they were up so high and the lighting, depending on if it was on the South chapels and the sun was coming in, you could not see anything. So I cannot wait. I am so excited to get to see those. Um, but if you are going to be in Paris and you want to see the statues from the top, which I've been talking about for five years now, and you want to see them at the architecture museum, you got to go soon because in June, those come out. The rest of the exhibit will stay till September, but the cha the the 16 statues will come out in June, which means because they're going home, they're going back up onto the roof, which I'm very excited about. But it has been amazing to be able to get up close and see them. Um, and maybe I'll check the signal in there. Maybe we could do a live video inside there showing you them again, but I've done a podcast episode about it years ago. Um, and so definitely check it out because I'll tell you a little bit about each one, but you can see the work up there. You see that tarp, but it's on the side because that is the part of the North tower that they have to redo because the, the flames did reach inside there. And then when it got there, that's when they said, we've got 20 minutes to save this because if the bells had fallen, they would have taken down the entire facade especially if it was Emmanuel and Marie, but those eight guys together, they're, they're not uh, for the faint of heart. If you had to go in there and pick those up. So very, very heavy. But one thing I also learned recently was that in 1795, did you know that this was for sale? They tried the city of Paris, tried to sell it in 1795. It was during the revolution. Um, because they wanted to sell it to stonemasons to come and buy it to use to build things. And nobody wanted to buy it. And actually, it was a little general named Napoleon that was the one that was really against it. 
and got the people kind of behind him to say that, no, we shouldn't do this. We need to save it. And thankfully, we get to still see her today. But she is pretty awesome. And I'm super excited to be able to see it and stand here and come see her all the time. It just takes me about 10 minutes to walk down here. We also have our lady here. This is not the original. The original right now is in saint germain lac And this is the copy. But she's here overlooking. And they still do Good Friday and on Easter. They were doing services out here. But one really cool thing as well is starting in June. In June through September, they're going to start. There's going to be more than 40,000 volunteers from all over France and even from Europe that are going to start doing pilgrimage walks to here, um, all leading up to the opening. I mean, I would totally say I would do that, but I'd be like, is there the version that gets to go in a car? Because I'm just not really one that's going to go hiking through the middle of the forest. <laughs> Maybe I'll just do it here. The pilgrimage is from my apartment here to no stop. I'll do that every day. No problem. This is my out, kind of outdoorsy situation. But look at that. You can see her. She's doing good. And there'll be more. So we could do this again next month. We could do it every month. If there's stuff, if there's been a lot of changes going on, then we'll do one. Or we'll do it every six weeks. Um, because it's just so exciting. And then also make sure if you follow me on Instagram. Because you could, I will post, I will come down here and post pictures all the time. I took thousands of pictures yesterday morning, zoomed in to see, um, the phones are so great now, but the, you have the, the Kings of Judah there and you can see those other ones in the Cooney museum. My mind went blank and I'm going to do a podcast episode about that. in I think for June, um, I have that slated for June to tell you all about those. And because Everybody knows about the one famous time that they found those and that story, but there's other ones because there's other times that they found some of them. And that was a surprise to me. And I've read a lot about Notre Dame and I love it. <laughs> My, yeah. <laughs> My, but you know what's really great is I only have to walk maybe two minutes from my apartment and I can see the spire down the street. So that's really exciting. And every time when I do that and I can see the spire and I'm like, oh, there it is. But tonight I am going to my friend's place and I am going to get a view from his terrace. The last time I was up there, they were still scaffolding around the spire. And so tonight I'm going up there for his salon um, that he does uh, weekly, every week, um, every other month. And I'm going to be on that with him. Um, it's a private thing that you have to be, I think you sign up and you pay for that, but I'm going to go do that with my friend, Mr. Baxter. Um, and so I will get a view. I'll poke out, out onto the balcony and get a little picture from up there of what it looks like from high above. Um, but she's pretty amazing. She is pretty amazing. Okay, Angela, not to not a problem. Oh, hi, Petra. Where's my buddy Ofer? Is he there? And I'm excited, Susan. You'll be here soon, right? Yeah, sharing the attention to detail. I'm just going back to your comments. The attention to detail the French have is beyond. Could you imagine what it was like for the people when they were building this and it took almost 200 years to finish it? I mean, if you're working on something like this, I mean, that general, the general that was in charge of the project, that he passed away in August. I mean, that's so sad because he will never have seen it finished up, which is just so sad and devastating. Uh, but think of those builders that worked on it for 150 years. I mean, none of them were working on it personally for 150 years, but for almost 200 years, it took until they had it finished. Pretty crazy. All right, guys, I have to end it here because I have to race home. My pilgrimage to my house. I have to race home, drop off my things, 
fix my hair as it took a beating today in the wind and then get to my next stop. It's been a busy and it is a incredibly busy week. I have a group of friends here celebrating her big birthday, but I have planned. It's my only time I'm ever dipping the toe back into the event planning world and will not do it again. But we have special dinners four nights this week and I have tours with them all over the city and it's going to be super fun. But this is a insane, crazy, crazy week. Um, and so I won't have one next Sunday because it will be my first day off in about 12 days. And so I'm going to need a break. I just am going to need to not walk. <laughs> so we won't have one next Sunday, but do make sure you catch everything. Tomorrow's episode of the podcast, which we have not recorded yet. Another thing, I'm just so busy. Um, is going to be about the... Um, I believe it's going to be about the first impression of this exhibition, which was 150 years ago tomorrow. So April 15th is a big day. Also tax day. So it's my friend Clark's birthday. So there you go. So thank you guys so, so much for being here. If you want to send a tip at all, you could do that to PayPal or Venmo at Claudine at ClaudineHemingway.com. And thank you, Terry, for coming in the street and handing me a little tip. That's very, very sweet of you. Um, it's birthday month for you, too. A happy, happy birthday. Um, but I will see you guys soon and check out everything, the podcast and Instagram and everything going on, millions of things that I do every single day. And I will see you guys later. And I hope you love, uh, just think tomorrow, tomorrow, do something special, have a glass of champagne or something special and have a little moment. Maybe tomorrow exactly at 6 20 PM Paris time for you. And say a little cheers to Our Lady and five years later, and we'll be back inside in such a short time. December. I'll be there first thing in the morning. I will push people over. I will trip them on the way, and I will do anything to be in there first. <laughs> okay, maybe in the first 10, but I'm being in there. I cannot wait. If I have to be out here at 2 in the morning, I will do it. I cannot wait to be in there, and I will share it with you guys. All right, guys. Well, you guys have a wonderful rest of your Sunday, and I will see you soon. And enjoy thinking of Paris and our girl, our lady, right there. All, every beautiful middle-aged inch of her. Thanks, guys. <laughs>